Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Speaking of the Arts. Today, we are speaking with members of the vocal group King's Return. We just signed these guys to our booking agency, and I am so excited for everyone to check them out. Recently, King's Return posted a video on YouTube of their version of Ave Maria, sung in an acoustically gorgeous-sounding stairwell, and it has gone viral with almost one million views. And actually, it's probably over a million views by the time you listen to this. Watch that video, and you'll see why. The band consists of Vaughn Faison, Gabe Kunda, J.E. McKissick, and Jamal Williams. In December, they released a new holiday album, and the band is currently hard at work on their next major recording. You can check out their new single, Beauty, which will also be on the album, and you can hear it on this episode as well. This band is doing something really special, and I am so grateful for the opportunity to be working with them. Please enjoy my conversation with King's Return. King's Return, welcome to Speaking of the Arts. Thank you guys so much for taking the time today. We were just talking about uh, the weather, which is always a fun topic. And here in Michigan, we're supposed to get a foot of snow. And and you guys there in Dallas, um, everybody is just terrified at the half an inch that's supposed to come. So I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> yeah. Great for us, because I'm not sure we're going to make it out of this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> the way it's looking. Hey, guys, just hang in there, right? <laughs> yeah. Like it, yeah. We're... Um, We'll see what happens. It's for a day, and it's frankly, we it's it's on the day that we have rehearsals, and we haven't had rehearsals. We had a rehearsal maybe like three weeks ago, but then COVID was just not, yeah, COVID was being COVID, and uh, we haven't had a chance to rehearse, and so we're like, yep, Thursday, we're going to get right into it because we have a record on Monday, and then here comes, you know. <laughs> The snow Here comes the weather. Yeah, doing its thing, and it's not even that bad. It's not even that bad, but we're it, we're Texas, so people cannot drive in Texas. So no. if there's a little ice on the ground. It's probably best to stay off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, again, guys, thanks so much for your time today. So why don't we just start by having everybody just briefly kind of describe your own background, um, and and then once everybody has a chance to do that, let's just talk a little bit about how the group itself formed. So, Gabe, why don't we just start with you? Uh, yeah, kind of describe your musical background and what you do and and bring us up to speed. Yeah. Hi, my name is Kip Kunda. Um, I am, well, my musical background, I studied music education in college. I've always been in love with the choral arts and vocal music um, since I was a kid. My mom used to play, um, you know, the Golden Gate Quartet. I was from Alabama around the house and I would sit next to the radio and try to pick out the parts and um harmonize with what i was hearing and just kind of doing some crazy stuff and then i you know they put me on the worship team at church <clears throat> and i also like give the parts to the worship team at church and also make them sing funky notes but they didn't know what i was singing uh, but you know i just that's that was kind of where my love for vocal music began and i, I was listening to a lot of like band, bands I, I love and enjoy like take six singers unlimited the high lows and i was a part of my upbringing and then went to college wanted to wanted to figure out a way to like i was like is there any way i can major in ensemble singing and they were like the closest thing you can do is like be a director for a coal program and i was like okay i'll do that and as i was doing that also had a passion for voiceover um did those things at the same time um and got my degree in music education and my parents were like you know you should try this voiceover thing out full time see what happens did that and then yeah i've been doing it full time ever since while also being in a band with uh, my brothers here and uh, it's been great it's been it's been a an amazing journey so that's that's what i do um I'm, well you're I'm, being modest can you just name a few of the voiceover companies you've oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh the voiceover the companies i've worked for are like disney um fox cnn um i mean everything from toyota uh popeye's chicken uh, so basically no, a bunch of no names just you're, I've never heard of them, actually. The voiceover uh, thing's just not happening for you, is what you're saying. Not, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. I'm still trying to figure that thing out. Yeah. Uh, no, but those are the those are the companies that I've got a chance to work with, and also do some anime, some animation, and video games as well, like Call of Duty and Valorant and stuff. And so, yeah, it, it uh, definitely what keeps the lights on and keeps uh, everything trucking on for sure. Awesome, Jamal. Why don't we turn to you now? So, Tell us about yourself. <laughs> so I'll just I'll just start my piece by saying let's save Gabe for last going forward <laughs> because it's like there's no way to to come behind that because my yeah. job is not nearly as exciting. But you know I guess yeah. I'll 
I'll go on ahead. Write that down, Mike. Gabe goes last. <laughs> Got it? All right. Fair it. enough. Okay. Put him at the end. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We could also oh, yeah. just edit it and we could still have him to last. That's fine. <laughs> I actually we support that if it's not too much work. Edit him out completely if you guys would feel more comfortable. Uh, um. He can he can announce his name and then we can just leave the rest of it out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah, um, Jamal Williams, so born and raised in Dallas and um, similar to the rest of the guys, just kind of grew up doing choral music through, you know, middle school through high school. Um, I did a couple of years of vocal performance at Baylor University, but then ended up transferring to University of Texas at Arlington to pursue a, a degree in business, but just continued singing. So, um, you know, my foundation was in gospel, started singing gospel probably when I was about 11 or 12. And um, so, you know, my influences would be um, Smokey Norful, um, as far as gospel is concerned, uh, Shea Norman, uh, Brandy listen to a lot of that in Usher. So just, you know, kind of all over the place as far as genres are concerned. Um, I presently work in insurance. So like I said, definitely nothing as exciting as having, you know, Disney as one of your employers, but you know, it, it pays the bills. What kind of insurance? So I'm actually in the, in the process of transitioning jobs. So I was working in a workers' compensation um, department, but now I'm kind of becoming more of a liaison between our customers and the claim department. Okay. All right, Vaughn, you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of my formative memories with music come through my dad, who was a promoter for a lot of R&B and hip hop uh, acts, you know, like uh, Biggie Smalls and like, a bunch of like yeah acts like that um and let me interrupt was that in the dallas area or where was he doing shows that, so i actually uh grew up in new york so i'm originally oh. from upstate new york he was in the city um so yeah so a lot of the east coast hip-hop and r&b artists um were the people that he worked with um yeah so that's where i got a lot of my like formative uh music tastes and you know a lot of like top 40 hip hop and R&B and then a lot of like old soul, like 70s, 60s soul um, and yeah, all those kinds of things. And uh, I was actually more of a band person. So I played trumpet starting in fourth grade and I played that all the way through high school. Um, and then I went to school for game design and decided I didn't want to actually do game design. And then I switched to music, um, but then I switched to voice <laughs> for music. Um, and yeah, so I got an undergrad degree in uh, classical voice and then my grad degree in jazz voice. So uh, classical degree was at SUNY Fredonia in uh, Fredonia, New York. And then master's was in uh, University of North Texas, which brought me out to Texas. Um, so yeah, and I've been out here ever since, ever since I came to grad school. Um, and that's kind of my story. All right. And last but not least, the one, the only, drum roll. The only. Hey, Eva, yeah. hey, can you say it? Please introduce huh? me. Sorry. Hey, Gabe, me. You should probably introduce Jay because you're. Yes. You, I, I I can't match your sonic ability. <laughs> um, gotcha. All right. Well, invoices is coming in the mail. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing uh, J. E. McKissick. <laughs> That'll be fifteen hundred dollars, hey. please. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the low end. What then? <laughs> wow. Um, Mike, you got that? You the invoice? That's, that's going to you. You wanted the voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> Please do it to him specifically, not King's Return. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, look, I'm a, I'm a broke dad, so uh, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, Gabe, I can owe you. I'll pay you installments. Um, so my name is J.E. McKissick. Uh, J.E. stands for James Emery because everyone always asks. Um, and uh, I grew up in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, and Arlington to be specific. And kind of like the others, I grew up, uh, well, I started singing at church as a kid. And then I started taking formal lessons through my choral program in, in middle school and high school. And um, and I and also took piano lessons, which kind of sort of connects to the story of the formation of this group, because one of my piano teachers 
ended up being Gabe's high school choir director. And when she invited me to sing at their school once is the first time I met Gabe. So that's, you know, kind of a part piece of the story. But I grew up singing, playing piano. I don't play a lot now, but I, you know, just I fiddle enough to, to get through. And um, uh, I always just love singing. I mean, I was I was doing it at church and um, and just as people would ask, you know, throughout the area for weddings and different things. I started singing jazz um, in my mid 20s and started doing that locally a little bit and um, just kind of. Um, am I doing it right? Am I, what am I talking about? My musical background? <laughs> just tell um, us who you are you know what your background is and because i just want to get a better sense of it for our listeners individually what you guys were up to before everybody met and the group formed gotcha okay so i was mostly doing uh friday or saturday night you could probably catch me singing jazz uh sundays you would catch me singing gospel at church um and i would i was i would teach youth choirs of like of teenagers and stuff and, and adults and um, just kind of different musical things just as people would ask. And I've sung at weddings for like half of the people I graduated high school with. <laughs> um, so, so that's kind of what I was doing before King's Return formed. All right, cool. So what happens after you know, your collective experiences, what, what is the catalyst that ultimately forms the group? And when did that happen? Yeah, well, I can talk about a little bit about that and I can pass the baton to JE. Um, but so the, the reason was because in 2016, I had to create a, a senior recital um, and it was kind of one of the requirements before graduating. And uh, at they said that in the recital at the end of it, I could do like a specialty piece or something that was just kind of different, whether that be like a duet with another singer or an ensemble thing. And I was like, well, I want to do an ensemble. This would be my opportunity to sing with uh, a group of singers. And I've always kind of in the back of my mind is like, yeah, well, one day I would love to be in a group or something like that. And so this was the opportunity to do that. Um, and at the time I knew J.E. Uh, there was another friend, Jesse Cannon and Jarius, um, all good friends, all were in my wedding. Um, and we I got them together. I was like, hey, let's do a couple of numbers. We'll do one song, uh, Richard Smallwood, Total Praise, and then we'll do Voice to Men um, what, uh, yesterday um, I think by the Beatles, I believe. Um, and so they agreed, thankfully. And so we met up in the practice rooms. We were, were you know, testing it out. We did the gig and um, it was cool. It was good. We got a great reaction. I actually still have the video on my Facebook. I got to upload that one day just to see the, the 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 very beginnings of King's Return. I mean, we didn't even have a name then. We we're just kind of the four black guys singing uh, <laughs> for a recital. Um, and then after a while, we actually started getting. I think we came back to do another thing at the school specifically, and then we started getting some here and there little small one off things. Um, and at a certain point, we decided that it was like maybe we should do this more uh not necessarily as a professional group yet uh but yeah je you can you can take it away from here yeah we did not set out to be a group we just love music we love singing so we just kept doing it together and honestly it would be like every three or four months a church or an organization would ask us to come sing and we'd kind of get a song together and we'd go sing and after a while, we decided, well, maybe we'll just keep going. And then eventually a name came, but there was no desire to really go all the way. Um, and then some of the guys who were who started with us originally kind of went to pursue other things, but it was understandable because we weren't really pursuing like a career in it. And so um we kind of got serious. Um, and uh, I mean, we picked up Jamal pretty early. I think that was a year two or three and then um and then Vaughn came after that and then after Vaughn joined um we really just kind of started taking it seriously and we had a couple of videos go viral because we were we would shoot the videos in my church where I lead worship at in the stairwell and that's the infamous stairwell where everyone sees us singing and so we rehearsed there but we also shoot our videos there and practice there and so uh, a couple of those videos went viral and and then we just started 
you know, deciding to maybe take it a little more serious. So yeah, Vaughn Vaughn joined in 2020. 2020? 2020. Oh my gosh. Vaughn has never been in a group outside of the pandemic. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 So, but that's uh, when we, that's when we started to like, when Vaughn joined us when it was like, okay, like we started just kind of hitting it with content and just trying to just be more active. Um, and it just, it paid off in a lot of amazing ways. And then it's funny because now, uh, we have a single out called beauty that Vaughn wrote. I know all the beauty. It's funny that was one of the songs that actually like we listened je and i were going back and forth about when we were thinking about who should we have on the top 10 or we saw that song it was like that's a beautiful song um didn't even think that that could be like one day <laughs> or something like that but here we are and uh, it came out on his birthday uh which was really cool a couple weeks ago but yeah. anyway, that's uh that that's when i think 2020 was our our kind of our launching year and, and uh we've been kind of official ever since it's been it's been really cool yeah, Jay, you mentioned the stairwells, which we I wanted to touch on, of course, because anybody who's seen any of the videos is probably wondering sort of how, you know, I, I guess my question is, what is it about stairwells in general that makes them acoustically unique? And then is it true of all stairwells or specifically you guys have found like the golden stairwell where the magic really happens? I like to think ours is pretty special, uh, <laughs> but um, I mean, any space you get in that acoustically makes you stop and appreciate sound. I think sometimes we just, we get so lost in the busyness of the world that we don't realize the beauty of sound. And so when you when you create sound in a stairwell, it continues and lingers for a little bit longer. And I think that's kind of, kind of what our music does. When we step into that space, for us even, even and as well as the listener, it kind of makes you stop and, and just pause and take it all in because the sound lasts a little longer. And I think that's kind of why we choose the space um, because it helps us to, it's a reflective space. It really is. And so uh, I think sound wise and spirit wise, it just helps us to, to really collect the music in a place that we can keep it. So. Yeah. Does it make, is it challenging to go from that acoustically sound environment to a more traditional stage? Like how do you, how do you kind of, also, does that influence the actual programming of the music that you guys would choose to do? Uh, All right, that was kind of an unclear question. So, <laughs> you no, know, I get the question. I don't know if you were asking it to me or one of the other guys, but absolutely, we 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 always think about: Are we going to be on close mic situation? Are we going to be in a larger hall? What are the acoustics going to be like? And the acoustics oftentimes will drive what the set list is because we got a pretty wide list of songs that we do uh but we kind of cater that to the invitation and the event as well as the acoustics because it's not easy to sing every song everywhere so we, we don't sing our classical stuff typically on a close mic um in a in a in a uh -oh. <laughs> maybe you guys are getting more snow than you thought uh, well, <laughs> no my office thought no one was here anymore so i had to wake it back up uh so well, yeah, no, that answered my question because um, I was just trying to think about the videos I've seen, uh, you know, even though I'm not there, right, experiencing it live, obviously you can hear the difference between the stairwell and a more traditional stage. So I was just really curious what going into a show, how, how you think about programming the music. Um, I so and a lot of the music actually doesn't necessarily need to be, I think we just love the sound of the stairwell so much. And just like, we love the intimate feel of it. And we're able to really um, uh, just kind of authentically hear each other. And obviously there is the reverb that's coming back, but it's not like it's going through a processing situation or whatever. It's just kind of us, you know, with that sound and what we do with that sound. Cause just because you sing 
notes in the stairwell doesn't mean it's going to make everything beautiful. Sometimes you sing something and then it'll come back to you like, oh, that was horrible. We need to fix that tuning or we need to do that. <laughs> and so then when we step on stage and we're close mic with some of the songs we do, um, it kind of we've, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like in some ways uh, it's helped us uh, with with some staging things and, and getting a little bit more accurate on our notes and stuff because, you know, we've, we've been doing it so um, just kind of outside you know outside of that yeah um but yeah it does play part like like je said we're not like with cla some of the classical stuff which we don't do like a bunch of but when we do we don't normally do those on close mic just because you know i think also somebody probably throw a tomato they still do that at us if we did um you know sing like ave maria in a close mic i just i don't know how that would work although it'd be cool to kind of see but uh i don't know if that would work so I we think we didn't we try to do it once in the we did for fun? Yeah. yeah, I mean it wasn't that bad, but I mean definitely it was not the stairwell. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the upcoming album. I want everybody listening to know that right now you guys already have um, a few things out. You mentioned the single "Beauty," which is gorgeous, <laughs> really, really wonderful. Um, and there's a holiday album that came out just this past December. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about the current, the upcoming album. Uh, what some of the music is going to be on it and ultimately when it will be put out so people can um, uh, mark their calendars and listen to it when it comes out. You may want to get this one. <laughs> so I, I guess I'll jump in here. So as far as um, some of the, the songs that we'll have on there, so I mean, we're still kind of in the process of locking down exactly what the, the track listing will be, but um, we can definitely say there'll be a couple of songs that you have heard um, us do in the stairwell. Uh, one in particular, I'll just throw this out there because I know it's one that everyone kind of, you know, is, is looking for would be How Deep Is Your Love. So, um, you know, Gabe referenced the fact that we're, you know, starting the process of getting in the studio to kind of start, you know, mapping that out and, and figuring out what, you know, how things will sound, playing with different studios and things so we can kind of you know, tailor, tailor the sound for the, that particular song. But yeah, so we're supposed to do that um, on this upcoming Monday. We need everyone. I'm sure this probably won't be out by then, but cross your fingers that, you know, the weather will cooperate and that COVID will calm <laughs> down so that we can actually rehearse and, you know, and go into the studio. But yeah, so um, like I said, How Deep Is Your Love? There are a couple of collaborations that we're in the process of working through. And I mean, I won't say any names just because, you know, we again, crossing our fingers, hoping that everything, you know, plays out the way that we want it to. But we really just want it to be a really interesting sound. We want it to be super cohesive and we want it to tell a story and also showcase the ability that, you know, we, we really tried to hone in on as far as, you know, being able to play in multiple genres of music. So, you know, we want there to be a little bit of something for everyone, including, you know, some new classical stuff that you haven't heard before that I think people are going to re be really excited about hearing. Well, and let me, I just want to mention, too, that's an important note about the group, the variety of music that you guys cover. Um, I can't stress that enough for people who are just kind of discovering you guys or, you know, ultimately for me as an agent trying to book the band, making sure people are aware that it's not just one type of music. Um, so ideally, your audience, promoters who are listening, there is something for everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, there is. And then, you know, we everything from we have a couple of jazz tunes on there, standards that people have known, but just more that we've uh, tailored to the King's Return sound. Um, and then there is, you know, obviously like the pop and like the how deep and the some R&B and classical, but in a way where it's not it doesn't feel like it's all over the place. I think the it, it, it kind of like Jamal was saying, it's all cohesive and it feels good and it feels right. And so there's a way that we can that we're kind of formulating things. So it just kind of seems like a movie movie almost um different yeah. colors and, and and stuff um and yeah different kind of shades of us um because i think a lot of especially at the beginning i mean we had people telling us you know maybe you got to pick a genre and stick in that genre or whatever. and even now sometimes one of our videos will go viral and depending on what genre that is whether that be r b or pop or or classical you know there'll always be a fan base that's just kind of like more of this more of this and so we're kind of like training them to understand that this, like, you're gonna get all of this all the time, and it's not just gonna be one thing all the time. So I think it just allows us to play in different sandboxes and um, really just kind of make music. Cause I don't think, I, I think sticking in one genre can kind of, 
it's obviously it's limiting um but it can kind of you know music isn't just one thing it's it's a, it's a myriad of things and a lot of influences and in, in, in such and um i think another thing is with us playing in different fields it also inspires black and brown kids like us um you know yo you can do whatever you want to you know you don't have to be stuck in this box of like you have to do this or you have to do that um if you have an interest in something go after it and i think that's been the testament of king's return as a whole and so we're hoping that this this uh, uh album is a good representation of just the different the the different uh genres we can do i like to call it superpowers because you know it's not always easy to to, to float in between genres and the fact that uh we can is is very special to us it also seems to me that it speaks to how people listen to music now as far as everything being streamed um yeah style to style to style my playlist it's it's every you know everybody's playlists are all over the place it's it's all types of music that you that you like so the fact that that's how the set, if you will, is coming across makes perfect sense to me. It's, and so, yeah, I think it's, it's like so um, spot on for the way people really do listen to music right now. Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, I think if you, our, our vision is that if you come to a King's Return show, you'll get something for the whole family. And hopefully you'll, you'll expand your musical taste, but also, um, You'll you'll get to see kind of who we are as people because the music that we do is reflective of of our musical background. Like we we've all been trained in classical music, we've all done a little jazz, a little pop, a little little bit of everything, and we decided not to pick one, but we wanted to sing it all, and so that's what we do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, this has been really great. I I don't want us to run too much longer. Is there anything? I, we haven't covered that is worth mentioning. We talked about the single that just came out. We talked about the new album. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing an open-ended question to the group before we wrap up. Anything that anybody, anything folks should know that we haven't covered? Huh. Um, I don't know if people would be curious about this or not, but um, we really get along. Like we, we like each other. We, we, there's, there's not any like type of ego or, I mean, we joke around a lot and play around about, oh, he's the Beyonce of the group or this or that. But honestly, like we we love to create space for each other to shine. Cause I, th and I think we realize that we're greater together than we are uh, apart. And I mean, honestly, like we don't, we don't really fight. We don't argue. Like we, like, we, we love what we do I and mean, we, we want to succeed. We want to go far in it. But I mean, I think we would be all doing it just oh, because yeah. we, we, we really just enjoy what we do. So we have fun. 100%. That, that's so evident. I mean, that truly comes across uh, on stage from watching the videos, the, the respect you guys have for each other and that, yeah, it's just so evident and clearly it makes the music better. I can't imagine, especially me, I, I was no, <laughs> the last thing anybody ever wants is to hear me sing, but the, I would imagine the intimacy of singing with people is um, it would be very difficult to do if there was animosity <laughs> or attention uh -huh. amongst the vocal members. So that's not surprising at all that it's, you guys are a, a tight knit family in that respect. No. Yeah. It, it definitely, you know, it helps, especially when making deci tough decisions or, you know, uh, you know, whether we're, you know, we've had to make some other business moves and decisions and stuff like that. And, I think we're pretty sensitive to each other's like feelings on something. And if one person is kind of like, I'm not really feeling this. And we're just kind of like, you know what? We're not either, you know, just kind of, you know, just being sensitive to that, I think is important, especially in a, in a, in a family band like this. Um, but yeah, man, that, that's, that's kind of, that's us all day. Yeah. Well, thanks again, guys, everybody. You've been listening to the members of King's return here on speaking of the arts. I want to thank you guys so much. I hope the weather isn't too bad. I hope, you guys can get together for that rehearsal and um, I look forward to hearing this new album when it's ready. Indeed. Thank you. Yeah, Thank my you. pleasure. Thanks, Thanks again, guys. Me.